Once you've created a project, go to the media page and right click to import the clips you will use during the project. Don't worry, you can add more later. Make sure to import your A-roll first and if you see this message, click change. By the way, the A-roll is your main clip and the B-roll is the stock footage you put on top of it. Once you've imported everything, keep in mind that you can always use smart pins to find what you need faster. Pro tip, especially if you don't have a powerful computer, select all your video clips, right click on one of them and select generate proxy media. This will make it easier for DaVinci to preview your files when you're editing. You can also trim your clips on the media page using these buttons. This way you can cut the first or last second of a clip if you don't need them. Next step would be to do some color correction, but I'll keep that for part two of this video. Stay tuned for it. You can see we have the media we imported before and a timeline. If your screen doesn't appear the same as mine, you can play around with these buttons. If you drag your A-roll on the timeline, you'll see that there's a general view on top and a detailed view below. To navigate it, hold and drag with your mouse in the upper portion. In case your audio file is separated from the video clip, it's best to sync it now in the edit page. I'll teach you how to do that later. To split a clip, click Command or Ctrl B. To navigate frame by frame, use the arrows on your keyboard. To delete a clip, click the delete button on your keyboard. You can see that when you do that, the rest of the timeline moves to cover the space left by the clip. This is called a ripple cut. There are two ways to trim footage. If you drag and hold from the side of a clip, the rest of the timeline will move to fit. And if you do that from the border of two clips, the timeline will stay still and both of them will be affected. There's also a third way to edit. If you drag and hold from this symbol at the center of the clip, its length will stay the same and you'll be able to choose what part of the footage is shown. Once again, we can find our media pool at the top right and our timeline in the bottom half. This time though, we have two viewers, one for the row clips and one for our timeline. If your screen does not appear the same as mine, you can play around with these buttons. As you can see, the timeline is very different. The ripple cut is not by default here, you have to click on the empty space and delete that too. There's also a lot more attention to the audio tracks, it's easier to handle multiple levels, and there are a lot of new buttons. But only these two are actually useful. Activate the magnet if you want the clips to snap when they are near each other, and deactivate the chain if you want to move the video and the audio separately. You can also change the size of the timeline with this slider. I promised that I would teach you how to sync video and audio, so here's the best way to do that. Drag the clip and the audio you want to sync in the timeline. Timeline. Select the two, right click on one of them and find auto align clips. Then select based on waveform. Now deactivate the chain, delete the old audio and drag the new truck up. Select both video and audio, right click on one of them and click on link clips. The edit page is also the best place to add B-rolls and transitions. Drag your B-roll footage on top of your A-roll and adjust it as you please. If you want it to fade in and out, go to the top corner of your clip and drag this handle. If you want to add some cooler transitions, go to the effects menu. Most of these are shit, but I like the push and cross zoom ones. You have to add motion blur to make them cool though. I'll teach you how to do that in a minute. There are multiple ways to use transitions. You can put them between two clips or at the end of a single one. If you look at the viewer, you can see that this clip is still visible even if from the editor it appears that it has already finished. So DaVinci is still using it in the whole transition even if we cannot see it. That's why if I add a transition to a clip that has already ended, you see that I cannot push it more. It simply doesn't work. I must make this shorter so that there are some extra seconds DaVinci can use for the transition. Now pay close attention because the next tool is probably the most powerful of them all, the inspector. With it, you can adjust the size, position, and angle of any clip. You can actually do a lot more, so I suggest you play around with the transform, cropping, and dynamic zoom sections. By the way, if you want to manually set some dynamic zoom without using any of these presets, you can click on this arrow, select dynamic zoom, and move these two rectangles. The red one represent the zoom of the clip at the start, while the green one the zoom of the clip at the end. The inspector is also the way to add motion blur to a transition. Simply click on it and drag this slider to one. Here's another pro tip for you. Instead of zooming your clips directly from the inspector, go to effects, effects, and find an adjustment clip. Every effect you add to the adjustment clip 
will be applied to the clip below. Do everything you want with the adjustment clip, then rename it using the inspector, drag it to the media pool, and you'll be able to spam your effects anywhere in the project. I know this video is getting pretty long, but I want to teach you one more thing, and it's how to make cool subtitles. Go to Effects, Titles, grab a text plus, make it start at the beginning of the sentence, change the font, make the size bigger, go to Shading, click on Free, click on the Enabled flag, reduce the opacity to about a half, go back to Text, make sure your cursor is at the beginning of the clip, click on the diamond near the text area, and type in the first word it's set in the clip. At this point, simply go to the start of every word and type it in. Congrats, you have made your subtitles. If you like the way I explained DaVinci, I'd recommend you subscribe to the channel. So when part 2 of this video comes out, you'll be notified. I'll teach you how to do color correction, advanced stuff on the editing page, and even make your own motion graphics and effects on Fusion. See you there.